What's going on, my pre-healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day. We're gonna continue on in this series of the ATIT's review questions, and today we're gonna to be covering main idea. Question one. Literary scholars have frequently compared the characteristics of poetry written by the first and second generation of romantic poets. Poets such as William Wordsworth establish the foundations of the exhalation of the imagination that later influenced writers such as John Keats and Percy Shelley. The first generation of poets was attempting to advocate for the importance of artistry and creativity. The second generation of poets built on this foundation and went even further in their speculations about what creativity could achieve, especially perhaps in a political sense. However, the second generation was also negatively impacted by their observations of the French Revolution, and this experience tempered their idealism. Which of the following best states the main idea for this passage? Is it A, to describe the distinctions between the first and second generation romantic poets? B, to explain the influence of William Wordsworth as a poet? C, to illustrate the importance of Percy Shelley as a poet? or D, to discuss the political viewpoints of the British romantic poets. And the correct answer is A, to describe the distinctions between the first and second generation romantic poets. The passage describes the distinctions between these two generations of British romantic poets. Choice D is incorrect because the poet's political sensibilities are included as an example of a factor that impacted their perspectives. Question two. The acoustics of various performance venues emerge as a result of careful planning and extensive decision making. Sound travels differently when it moves through air and the objects it encounters in a particular environment strongly impact the way that listeners hear the music. Venues that are designed primarily to house symphony orchestra performances require vastly different acoustic designs than do venues that cater to more intimate performances. Engineers must take into account a wide variety of variables during the design process, including vibration, sound, ultrasound, and infrasound. A sound wave consists of a fundamental, followed by a series of sequential overtones. The way that listeners perceive these sound waves is impacted by the material used in the listening environment, the physical layout of the environment, the position of the stage relative to the audience's seating, and even the height of the ceiling. Many acoustic engineers also must take into consideration the manner in which transducers impact listening. Transducers include loudspeakers, microphones, and sonar projectors. The addition of these tools to an acoustic environment can strongly influence and transform how audience members in different locations in the room perceive any sound being transmitted. Which of the following best states the main idea of the passage? Is it A, sound is a multifaceted and complex phenomenon impacted by numerous factors. B, acoustic engineers need to acquire an advanced degree to become qualified. C, acoustic engineering is a sophisticated science that requires complex decision making. Or is it B, multiple acoustic engineers should work on a single project to combine their expertise. And the correct answer is C. Acoustic engineering is a sophisticated science that requires complex decision making. The passage emphasizes the fact that performance venues have excellent acoustics as a result of extensive planning and careful decision making. Choice A is incorrect because this statement is just too broad. Moving on to question three. Michelangelo was arguably the most talented and prolific artist to emerge from the Italian Renaissance. Not only did he spend three years on his back, lying on a scaffold, to create the famous painting adoring the Sistine Chapel, but he also created a sculpture of the Biblica hero David that has been emulated for centuries. Michelangelo himself reflected that he simply took a block of marble and removed all of the pieces that did not belong to the David statue. Michelangelo is considered a consummate artist because he created works in so many different media, including painting and sculpture. The passage is primarily concerned with which of the following? A, justifying the value of Michelangelo's art. B, explaining why Michelangelo could create in multiple media. C, analyzing the humility of great artists from the Renaissance. Or D, 
arguing that Michelangelo's accomplishments are some of the greatest of his time. And the correct answer is D, arguing that Michelangelo's accomplishments are some of the greatest of his time. The first sentence emphasizes Michelangelo's status as a master artist. The passage describes his most well-known artworks. Choice A is incorrect because the passage is more of an advocacy for Michelangelo rather than a defense of the value of his art. Question four. The current test for measuring IQ or an individual's intelligence quotient were developed during the early and mid 20th century. Their use was popularized by Terman, who designed specific tests for use in the US Army. Some psychologists today assert that the traditional system of measuring IQ should remain the sole method of assessing intelligence. Historically, the test has been constructed based on the assumption that there exists one general intelligence factor that impacts an individual's intellectual capacity. The validity of this assumption has been characterized by other psychologists. In particular, Howard Gardner has emphasized that a unified conception of intelligence based on a single factor remains highly limited and unnecessarily constraining. Gardner has postulated an alternative method sorry, theory concerning the existence of multiple intelligences. He argues that the individuals can possess intelligence in particular areas such as linguistics intelligence, spiritual intelligence, spatial intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, musical intelligence, mathematical intelligence, and kinesthetic intelligence, among others. Gardner asserts that the individuals can be extremely intelligent and exhibit talent in one area while failing to demonstrate the same level of prowess in another area. This theory has been discussed widely, although efforts to obtain empirical evidence to support his ideas remain in process. Which of the following best states the main idea of this passage? A, traditional IQ tests are faulty and should be eliminated. B, Howard Gardner's theory of IQ measurement focuses on multiple intelligences. C, both traditional IQ tests and Gardner's assessments should be used to measure intelligence? Or D, Gardner's IQ test focuses on predominantly linguistic intelligence? And the correct answer is B, Howard Gardner's theory of IQ measurement focuses on multiple intelligences. The passage describes Gardner's theory and indicates it is focused on ideas of multiple intelligences. Choice C is incorrect because the passage does not address the topic directly. Question number five. To all department supervisors, the ACME Records Retrieval System will be undergoing scheduled maintenance this Friday from 4 p.m. until midnight. Please inform all department personnel of the system outage so that researchers can make alternative arrangements to access necessary data. An archived copy of the Core Business Records Database will be accessible in the Web Services Department office from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. on Friday. However, this database contains only core records data and is limited in its scope. Please direct any questions to Marcus Sampson, Web Services Maintenance Officer at 617-555-0004. In this passage, what is the memo mainly about? Is it A, it notifies employees of maintenance on the records retrieval system? B, it notifies employees regarding who to contact in the Web Services office? C, it describes the scope of the company's core business records database, or D, it explains the public availability of the core business records database. And the correct answer is A, it notifies employees of maintenance on the records retrieval system. The memo is designed mainly to notify ACME employees of maintenance on the records retrieval system. Choices B, C, and D are mentioned in the memo, but they are details in the memo as opposed to the main idea. Question six. The Beatles influenced the genre of rock and roll just as Beethoven expanded the genre of the symphony. John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr expanded the public's understanding of their musical genre and reclassified it as an anthem for rebellion. Their music transformed into the hippies theme song of the 60s. Beethoven similarly altered the public's understanding of the symphony. In his addition to the chorus in the last movement of the Ninth Symphony attests to this feat. What is the passage mainly about? Is it A, it compares the effects that the Beatles and Beethoven had on their genres? B, it explains how the Beatles helped reclassify rock and roll as a genre? 
C, it contrasts the music styles of the Beatles with those of Beethoven. Or D, it describes how the music of the Beatles became the hippies theme songs. And the correct answer is A, it compares the effects that the Beatles and Beethoven had on their genres. The focus of the passage is to convey in the first sentence, which states that the Beatles influenced the genre of rock and roll just as Beethoven expanded the genre of the symphony. The passage mainly compares the effects that the Beatles and Beethoven had on their respective genres. Choice B is a detail mentioned in the passage, and choice C can be eliminated because the passage does not contrast the style of the artists, but instead compares how they were impacted. Question 7. In the animal kingdom, many symbiotic relationships exist between two species that take actions known to be mutually beneficial for both parties. In the water, clownfish have such a relationship with sea anemones. The fish are one of the only species that can swim unharmed in the anemone's waving tentacles, as typically the tentacles would sting any animal that swam near it. However, the clownfish is immune to the stings of the tentacles and therefore is protected by them. In return, its presence helps the anemone stay clean, avoid attack by parasites, and remain free from infection. Which of the following best states the main idea of the passage? Is it A, clownfish are one of the only species that can swim unharmed near sea anemones? B, clownfish and sea anemones have a mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship? C, the sea anemones are able to protect clownfish and offer them a safe place to reside? Or D, clownfish typically help sea anemones to stay clean and avoid being attacked. And the correct answer is B, clownfish and sea anemones have a mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. The main idea of the passage is that clownfish and sea anemones have a mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. Choices A, C, and D all represent supporting details of the passage, but not the main idea. Question 8, to whom it may concern? I am writing to request a refund of the charge made to my credit card for the purchase of a water filter on Friday, September 18th. The filter was the wrong type for my filtration system, so I had to return it. I returned the filter to the store on Saturday, September 19th, and the customer service clerk had me complete the paperwork to refund my charges for the purchase. However, the credit never appeared on my credit card account. Please refer to charges in the amount shown on the credit receipt attached to this email. Thank you for your assistance, Claire Glendheim. The email is primarily concerned with which of the following. A, explaining the reason for a return. B, reporting a product failure. C, complaining about the poor service. Or D, requesting a refund. And the correct answer is D, requesting a refund. The email is primarily concerned about requesting a refund. The first sentence of the email clarifies the reason for the author's message. The author does explain why she returned the product, so choice A indicates that it is supporting detail of the email, not the main idea. Question 9. Historically, the study of creativity has concentrated on persons known for their innovation. Early creativity studies focused on creative geniuses such as Einstein, Mozart, or Shakespeare. This type of creativity is known as Big C creativity. However, as researchers on creativity progressed, a corresponding interest in how per people could be creative in smaller ways on an everyday basis emerged in the discipline. Scholars began to investigate how ordinary tasks such as cleaning, driving particular familiar routes, and completing work or schoolwork could be conducted in innovative ways. The focus of creativity research has been labeled little c creativity. Which sentence best describes the main idea of this passage? Is it A, creativity occurs not just in large ways, but through small everyday actions? B, the study of creativity has historically concentrated on innovative persons? C, the study of creativity addresses both big C and little c types of creativity? Or D, driving familiar routes to a destination can be considered an example of creativity? And the correct answer is C. The study of creativity addresses both big C and little c types of creativity. The main idea of this passage is that the study of creativity addresses both big C and little c types of creativity. The passage focuses mainly on the study of creativity, not on defining what creativity is, so answer A can be eliminated. 
Choice B also presents supporting details of the passage, but is not the main idea. And now we're moving on to our last and final question, question 10. Laurel Hill Botanic Gardens is pleased to announce the installation of the sculpture series by Laurel Hill's artist in residence, Daryl C. Grant. The installation features mixed media sculptures emphasizing the floral designs prominent in Mr. Grant's paintings, many of which are also on exhibit in the Michael and Frieda Sachs viewing room. The sculpture exhibit will open at 10 a.m. on Thursday, June 5th. The Botanic Gardens art curator, Jesslyn Jones, will present an overview of the sculptures and lead a guided tour of the installation. The opening ceremony will end with refreshments served in the Nature Observatory from 2 to 3 p.m. This is a members-only event. All Botanic Garden members and their guests are invited to attend. Tickets are $50 per person and can be purchased at the registration desk beginning Monday, May 5th. What is the memo mainly about? A, it invites Botanic Garden members to a sculpture installation. B, it explains the history of floral sculptures at the Botanic Gardens. C, it describes details regarding the work of sculptor Daryl C. Grant. B, it explains the role of the art curator in presenting the exhibit. And the correct answer is A, it invites Botanic Gardens members to the sculpture installation. Choice B is incorrect because the memo does not discuss the history of floral sculptures. And choice C and D convey details mentioned in the passage, but it is not the main idea. I hope this video was helpful for you in passing your ATITs like a boss. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love interacting with you and I love answering your questions. Make sure that you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram where I post weekly ATITs review questions to help you better understand the content and pass your ATITs like a boss the first time. Until next time, I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!